Arsenal versus Tottenham, Tapas Pulis versus Trofe Mourinho, the London Derby. We will be talking about that, giving our thoughts on that. So I hope you are doing well. Don't forget to leave a like in the video and do not forget to subscribe if you are new. So it's an interesting game because on the one hand, it is a game where Arsenal fans will be for the first time in a long time going to a London derby with Spurs on top of the table and Spurs flying high in terms of confidence. They've only lost one game in the league and one game in the Europa League. So two games this season lost for them. Magnificent start to their season. And I must say, it is, it is, it is hard to see Arsenal winning this game. But knowing Arsenal, this would probably be their best game of the season. This would probably be their best performance of the season. It would be so typical of Mikel Arteta's boys, or men rather, to come out and play extremely well. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But my thoughts on which team is in the better position, I think it's obviously Spurs, right? Like defensively, they aren't the best team in the league defensively, but they're much, much better than Arsenal. You know, I would say they're a top five, maybe top six team in terms of defense, just comparing to the other teams off the top of my head. Um, Arsenal at the moment aren't even Fram, in terms of defense, I think Arsenal are in the bottom five in the league, genuinely. Like, they can talk about the clean sheets they got away from home to the big six and the clean sheets they got, they got at Old Trafford. It doesn't mean anything. Defense is not just about clean sheets. Like, if you're getting clean sheets but conceding 20 plus goals at your, uh, 20 plus shots at your goal, you're not a good defensive team. A good defensive team doesn't let players get space in behind to take shots doesn't let players get into the box to get close one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. A, a, a good defensive team doesn't need one of the best goalkeepers in the league to play like a man of the match, like Prime Casillas, to save them. And look, I'm not saying Leno's one of the best goalkeepers in the league, but on his day, he's really, really good. I've seen him save Arsenal and keep Arsenal relevant, much like De Gea kept us relevant in those three years when we didn't have a defence. So I'm not hearing anything about Arsenal's defence. I think... They are terrible. They are awful defensively. So yeah, in that department, Spurs wins. Midfield, Spurs wins. Ndombele is the only player I need to mention. He's an engine. He's a workhorse. He can do it all in the midfield and more. And he seems to be the driving force of that Spurs midfield. Now I know there's a lot of other names like Hoiberg has played magnificently well. He's a absolutely fantastic signing for Spurs and we'll we'll just have to wait and see how he plays in this game should he start which I, I, I have no doubt he will you look at Kane Spur, uh, 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 Son sorry one of the premier duos in the Premier League at the moment and when I look at Huming Son I see a player that if he was Portuguese if he was Brazilian if he was even English if he was any of the top nine countries in football in terms of popularity, people would like him. But because he's Korean, because he's not fashionable, because he's not a social media uh, merchant, and he's not brandable off the field, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. Because in terms of football, Son is probably one of the best players in the Premier League, fam. I would take him over Rashford any day. I would take him over Martial any day. Uh, heck, I would even take him over Cavani. Anyone in our front three, Son is getting in ahead of any of them, fam. You know, people talk about Harry Kane this, Harry Kane that, and Harry Kane's a magnificent striker, one of the best in the world. I'll give Harry Kane that, but can we talk about one of the best left wingers in the world? Can we talk about Son Perignon, Sonaldo? He is unbelievable, fam. He is unbelievable, fam. And he's been unbelievable for a while. It's not just a new thing. He has, this is not just his first good season. His ability to get past the man, his ability to link up with other players, is it's, it's like I talk about it with Martial, but his is multiplied, you know? He can do so much. He can get on the end of a header. He can get on the end of a volley. Occasionally, he can he's a he can be a flair player when he needs to, but he can simplify his game when he needs to. He can be a constant threat, and that's where I worry about Arsenal because if Arsenal just decide to play the low block, Spurs have so many answers. If Arsenal decide to play football and actually, you know, show some bravado, Spurs have so many answers. They can play on the counter attack. They're one of the best counter attacking teams in the league, right? But they can also break down teams that sit back because they've got so many options. You've got Son, you've got Bergwijn, you've got Lucas. They're able to stretch defenses apart and open up spaces in the middle for people like Kane to get in, fam. So even Kane dropping back, playing the holding role, he can pull the, def the defenses out. He can bring his players into the game. He can bring other players into the game, I should say. Um, balls over the top are a thing with Spurs as well nowadays, so I don't see what Mikel Oteta's grand plan is against Spurs. 
Spurs because whatever he comes with, I think he's going to have to be brave. I think he's going to have to go for it. I don't know if you want to be an Arsenal fan and you want to watch your team play, put 10 men behind the ball against Spurs and you want to get piped 3-0, no, fam. Um, it's just not It's just not it. It's just not it. So I think you've just got to go strong. I think, I think this is time. Um, on the topic of Mikel Oteta, I did famously say on this channel that I thought he was the right man for, for Arsenal in the same way that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the right man for United, okay? And I had my reasons. Now, talking specifically about Mikel Oteta, I still think in terms of a cultural rebuild and in terms of understanding the club, he is probably one of the best candidates out there, but it's getting to a point where his results on the field and his inconsistency, or he's actually, his consistency, he's in being stubborn and picking certain players is going to cost him his job, you know? So he's, he is very consistent in his team selections, but I think he's consistently being stubborn and he's consistently being an idiot because picking people like William, picking people like Bellerin, whatever the behind the scenes reason is, whatever's in that contract, that lucrative contract that William got, you you cannot put your job on the line to preserve a stupid contract or a stupid relationship with the, with the agent and the player, fam. Just bench him or play him in the 10. Play him in the 10. You guys need creativity in the 10. Every Arsenal fan, well, most Arsenal fans are talking about how, oh, bring back Ozil, he's a 10. We need creativity. People act like... People act like a 10 is the only creative position on the field. Liverpool don't play with the 10. Newsflash, Liverpool don't play with the 10. A lot of teams in world football, Ajax, don't play with the 10. Because I know what people are going to say. Oh, yeah, Marcus, but you can't compare them to Liverpool. Fine. Let's compare them to Ajax. You're telling me Ajax are that far ahead of Arsenal in terms of football. Yes, they might have a better brand. They might have a better philosophy. They might have a better structure in their football club. But on a football pitch on the day, you're telling me Ajax are miles ahead of Arsenal. No, they're not. And they don't play without a 10. There's so many examples in world football. So I'm not hearing this. They need a 10 stuff. And if they do, put Willian in the 10, bruv. If you need a 10 that badly, you can't play any other system in football. Play Willian in the 10. Play Pepper in the right. I know Pepper's been suspended. Get, get Saka in there. You know? Like, why is Lacazette still playing? Why is Bellerin still playing? Why is Xhaka still playing? Why are all four or five of those players consistently playing together? I understand that you have to play some of them because of a lack of squad depth. Fine, play two weak players in, in a couple of positions, but then the other three bench them, fam. You know, like, I don't think there's any shame in playing a younger team in order to, um, to, to, to patch up some of the weaknesses in your team. And yes, young players are full of mistakes, but the experienced players aren't helping you much. David Luiz is a calamity waiting to happen. So, I don't get it, fam. Arsenal's best players are the young players. It, it is the Martinelli's. You know, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it, but... Anyways, in terms of score prediction, I think Spurs will win this one 3-1. I think Spurs will pipe Arsenal. You know, I, I, I want to say 3-0, but I feel like Arsenal are going to get a dodgy penalty. So, 3-1 in terms of score predictions. Um, I think Kane will score a brace. Son will get an assist and a goal. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, fam. And I think I think Arsenal will get a penalty and Aubameyang will score. And then they'll, they'll, they'll all be like, he's back. He's back because he scored a penalty. You know them wait there. You know how deluded Arsenal fans are, bro. I'm just kidding. If there is an Arsenal fan watching, it's just banter. Relax. But anyways, I hope you did enjoy that, man. And uh, if there are any Spurs and Arsenal fans or anyone with an opinion on those two teams, let me know in the comments down below if you did make it this far. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video as it's massively, massively important. And uh, yeah, share the content with any of your football mates who might be interested. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. As usual, it's been your boy Triple M. I will check you in the next one. Peace.